Special edition of PFTPM on this Friday. It's a good Friday edition of the program. And joining us now, not a good tight end or a great tight end, the best tight end in the National Football League. He is 49ers tight end George Kittle. George, welcome back. How are you, pal? Hey, thanks so much for having me, man. It's a pleasure to be on. Hey, it's great to talk to you again. So you're in Nashville right now, not in the Bay Area. Is Nashville where you're typically spending your off seasons? Yes. No, Nashville's my home. Um, came down here three years ago. C.J. Beathard lives here, who was my quarterback at Iowa and my quarterback for the Niners. So uh, I have someone to throw to me. And then uh, Trent Taylor, wide receiver, uh, also lives in Nashville. So uh, just got the teammates down here, so it makes it easy to train. You know, not a lot of sports going on right now, but I thought of you over the weekend because I know you're a big wrestling guy. And I saw that Gronk won the 24-7 belt. I didn't know what the 24-7 belt was, so I had to look it up. Apparently, it, it's something that you have to defend anywhere, any place, as long as a WWE referee is present. So if you are ever around Gronk in the presence of a WWE referee, are you going to try to pin him? Uh, yeah, I'd have to blind sign him, though. He's like three inches taller than me. <laughs> still probably weighs 30 pounds heavier than me. I'd probably go for he the looks, chop block, just take him out the knees. He kind of looks like he's put some weight back on. Did you notice that this weekend? Yeah, that's the thing about Gronk. He always looks like he can play football. So he he looks like he always looks like he's ready to roll. Uh, but yeah, no, he he looked fabulous. He did a great job on WrestleMania. It was just it was just overall fun to see him out there having fun. And there has been some talk of. Gronk possibly coming back to play with Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. PFT commenters Dog Leroy had the exclusive report. <laughs> does does Deeney have anything to add? Uh, I think all that we had to add was I called dibs on one of his jerseys. Then. So so Deeney's not going to break into the the uh, the canine reporting field. Is that what you're telling me? No, actually, right now she's lying outside in the sunlight sleeping. So she is off of reporting duties right now. <laughs> uh, what have you been doing, George, during this crazy upside down time that we've been uh, stuck in for just about four weeks, but it feels like it's been four years? It is. You know, this has definitely been different. Um, you know, luckily I have a house with a decent sized garage. So we, uh, me, and my wife, and uh, my dad and my mom turned the uh, garage into a gym. So it has everything I need uh, that, you know, any other gym would be at. So I don't have to go anywhere to train. I got my spot rack, you know, stair stepper growing machine. I got everything I needed in there, uh, which is really fun because, you know, I'm just spending time with my family. And then the other thing I've been doing, uh, me and my wife have actually been in the kitchen a little bit more and, you know, whipping things up here and there. I actually made my Easter ham last night, which was uh, pretty fun. And it's a different experience. It's my first time cooking an Easter ham. Yeah, I, I've never cooked an Easter ham. How, how big of a project is that? Honestly, it was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, all we did, we, we covered the whole thing in like a honey maple glaze and threw it on my Traeger grill and uh, let's let it cook for like 30 minutes and it was done. Now I have ham for like the next three weeks. <laughs> so, so what, yeah. What is your routine when you work out now and how different is it than what it would be if you could go to the facility? Uh, it is a little bit different. Uh, you know, I wake up, uh, you know, get a good breakfast in and then I, I, uh, you know, luckily through the 49ers, we have, uh, you know, we have trainers that reach out and they'll put us through workouts or, you know, put us through stretching routines, warm ups and stuff. So I get a nice warm up in and then I get a lift in. And uh, after that, I try to get some speed work in. I got a little bit of a backyard so I can move a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not running routes full speed right now, waiting to, you know, till the social distancing thing in so I can catch the ball from CJ again. But you know, overall, just trying to do everything I can just to keep my body in shape and ready to roll whenever football's called back. How hard is it to find the motivation? And you haven't gotten to where we would be in the off-season program yet, but it looks like there's not going to be an off-season program. How much harder is it going to be when you're going to have to do all of this on your own without being in a, a situation where your teammates are there and, you know, that motivation that comes from being around your friends and being around your coworkers? And even if you don't like feel like working out, you know you have to go do it. When it's just you, how much harder will that be to find that will and that desire to basically punch the clock every day and do what you need to do? Uh, you know, honestly, it's pretty easy for me because like I, 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 I get paid to play football, which has been my dream since I was a little kid. So, you know, I wake up and my first thing is, hey, I have an opportunity to get better today. I have an opportunity to go you know, train to play football today. Uh, and that's all I look at. It. I, I just wake up, I train, I, I hit it hard and you know, it's awesome. Like my wife and my dad actually throw me the football. Like I get, I get a hundred, 150 passes a day. So you know, I'm just enjoying it. Um, you know, and I'm not going to 
no, I'm not going to worry about something that I can't control, but I'll be damned if I let it get the best of me. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to train, uh, you know, like I have guys competing for my job. You know, that's what, that, that, that's what's, you know, unprecedented about these times is, you know, everyone's training at their own ways, at their own levels, you know. So it, it depends on, you know, how seriously you take this situation. If you can hit the ground running when it all does start back up. And I promise you that I will be definitely hitting the ground running full speed through somebody. And, and I, I love the attitude and I respect the desire to always be looking for ways to improve. But I think about everything you've accomplished so far in your NFL career. And it's hard for me to identify any ways that George Kittle can improve. What are you specifically hoping to work on to take your game to a higher level? Um, I mean, there's plenty of things that you can get better at. Um, you know, actually, my tight ends coach just sent me my good tape and bad tape from the season. So I've been able to watch that. Um, you know, whether it's an understanding of Coach Shanahan's offense, you know, and the plays that I need to be better on, and, uh, you know, whether that's man to man routes or, you know, finding spots in the zone or, you know, hand placement, footwork, and run, the run game or pass pro, you know, there's always something you can get better at. And so, you know, I'm just taking it one day at a time. I pick something from my game that I, you know, I feel like I could get better at, which is, you know, everything. But so today I might do a little bit of extra footwork in the pass pro. Um, but th- that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to get better one thing at a time. And, you know, I feel like if I can just get better at one little thing every single day, by the time the season starts, I'll have uh, quite a head start on uh, other guys around the league. What do you watch more, George, the good tape or the bad tape? Uh, you know, it's a mixture of both. You know, it's fun to watch the good stuff, but you know, it's it's damn frustrating to see all the plays that I could have been a lot better on. There's definitely like three or four pass pros throughout the season that I want to hit a uh, headbutt a wall for, but you know, that, that's, that's why you play football. You know, you just try to get better at it and um, you know, yeah, but like I said, you try to watch them both. It's frustrating to watch the bad, but it's also an opportunity to get better. You, you have the right attitude for dealing with this current pandemic. We can, can only control what we can control. But, you know, at some point, the events may lead us to a situation where games are being played without fans present. And you're a guy who feeds off the fans. I saw it at the playoff game against the Vikings. I saw how you were after the game. And and I know that the presence of the 49ers fans really really helps you get to that highest possible level of, of motivation and achievement. What's that going to be like if you go out into that stadium and there's nobody there? Uh, home games will definitely be weird. But if I can go into Seattle or New Orleans without fans there, that'll make my job a lot easier. <laughs> I don't have to, yeah, I don't have to listen to anything. <laughs> No more silent counts, nothing like that. That'll make my life really easy. So road, hey, I'll play on the road. That's that's fine. No, no worries with that. But no, definitely, you know, the fans is what makes the game so much fun. Um, you no, know, whether it's you know winning a game and your stadium's going ballistic, or you know you win a game on the road and the crowd goes silent. Like both of those are things that I, you know, those are some of the you know pinnacles of football for me. Just hearing that. Uh, so it'll be definitely different if that's you know what happens. But you know, like I said, I'm going to focus on what I can control and. If I can just go play football again, I'll be pretty happy. What What is the departure of DeForest Buckner, who was traded to the Colts? What does that mean to the 49ers going forward? Um, you know, Defo is is incredible. You know, he's an incredible person and an amazing football player. Uh, well, honestly, the only thing that bugged me about him is that he was longer than me and I'm still old, older than he is. That's just I don't understand. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it, He's just he's a great football player, and I'm, I'm nothing more than happy for him, and he's deserved every penny that he earned going to Indianapolis. Uh, will it be tough to replace a personality, a captain, and a locker room guy like him? Yeah, but the thing is we have such a great locker room. We have such a great culture that we have guys that will step up. You know, and I'm just looking forward to that. Like I said, I, you know, I'm nothing but happy for DeForest and you know, him making that. And, but, um, yeah, it, it'll be difficult, but I think we have the locker room to be able to, to do it and fill that spot. You know, it's only been a couple of months, George, since the Super Bowl. It feels like it's been so much longer than that. What's the one memory of that experience that's going to stand out for you 50 years from now? Uh, part, uh, one thing that I will never forget, you know, obviously losing. Uh, I will say losing Super Bowl is one of the worst things that's ever happened in my life. Uh, it's hard, and, you know, you got to, you know, move past that. You know, they miss but at the same time, you know, I'm nothing but grateful for that opportunity because my dream as a little kid was, you know, to play in a Super Bowl and my other dream was to win a Super Bowl. So I achieved one of those dreams and, you know, now I'm just trying to get back there. Um, one of my favorite moments, though, is just, you know, running onto the field, you know, you know, with the whole team and just the fact that, you know, trying to soak all in, soak it all in that I was actually playing in the Super Bowl, which was, you know, if I had told myself as like a seven or eight year old that I was going to play in a Super Bowl one day, uh, that kid would be pretty jealous. And so I, I'm just happy that uh, you know, I got to actually do that. Now I just got to get back there and win it. 
See, I wouldn't be able to go back and watch any of that game or any of that film for oh, yeah, a long brutal. time. <laughs> how, 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 how long did it take you before you were able to do it? Um, I watched it. I think I watched it a week later. I know my tight end coach hasn't watched it yet, <laughs> but it, it it is. It's like I said. It's it sucks overall. Um, it's one of the you know most non fun things I've been a part of is losing the Super Bowl, but. Um, well, I get to play football day in and day out. And so I'm just excited to be back on the field with my teammates at some point, and, you know, give us another shot at, you know, winning some more games and getting back to the playoffs. And I'm just looking forward to that opportunity. And I assume part of your leadership uh, of the organization is going to include reminding guys what it feels like to be on the wrong side of that outcome. And the goal now is brick by brick, build it back up, get back there and make sure this time around we win it. Yeah, no, I mean, it is. It's, um, you know, there are plenty of plays out there, offense, defense, special teams that we could have played better, you know, and that's why it's a team sport. So, you know, we just got to figure that out, figure out how to win. And then I think that's one thing that our team did such a great job of last year was figuring out ways to win, whether that was, you know, nine to zero in a, in a rain game in Washington or, um, you know, winning a shootout in New Orleans or, you know, a defensive game against Arizona. Like, it, every every game is different, and I thought our team did a great job of that. So if we can just continue to figure out how to win, then uh, I think we'll, we'll be just fine. What do you think of the playoffs expanding by one team where there's now an extra opportunity to get a seat at the table, but if you're the number two seed, you got to play an extra game? Whew. I love it and I hate it at the same time. Uh, you know, I'm all for you know. I like I like games. I love the playoffs. It's you know, playoffs are some of the most exciting spot, um, times in sports. Uh, you know, that that bye week for the two seed is huge. Um, you know, I'm all for bye weeks. I like bye weeks. I like it. Hey George, before I let you go, football. Uh, what are you there? You cut out. On yeah, me. I'm here. Okay. Uh, one thing before I let you go. There was some chatter that kind of came out of the blue several weeks back about Tom Brady, grew up in the Bay Area, 49ers fan. Maybe there was thought he wanted to come back and play, which obviously would mean he'd be taking Jimmy Garoppolo's place. What what was your reaction to that talk during that week or so that it was lingering? Um, you know, it is what it is. People talk. You know, there's nothing else to talk about. Um, it's nothing that I took seriously. You know, Jimmy G's my wanted to be my quarterback. I think he's one, one hell of a quarterback. We don't get to the Super Bowl without him. And so, you know, there's no one, you know, that I'd replace him with. Uh, I think what he's done for this team leadership-wise and on the field, uh, you know, it's one of a kind. And there's no one else I'd rather be around to throw me the ball. So, now I'm just excited being, being able to play football again with Jimmy G. And, uh, and I know he's ready to sling that rock again. All right. Hey, George, I appreciate some of your time, buddy. We wish you all the best. Enjoy that ham. Stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you back on a football field very soon. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.